So what's the main idea behind this uh, work? The idea is that oops, sorry, ontologies can be used to st store uh, data. Uh, a long time ago, we started by storing data in plain text files. Then we started using uh, databases, relational databases, in, and today we are finding other artifacts to store data for our uh, applications. So the idea is to build applications written in Perl that use ontologies as a data storage. So for this, we need at least to have a way to represent ontologies in Perl, a way to uh, implement uh, simple operations that our application requires, and uh, of course, we want to use this, all this uh, inside our favorite programming language, in this case, Perl. So the bottom line is we want to use Perl as the programming language, ontologies uh, to store data and build applications. Of course, uh, that today we are talking about modern, rich, ontology-aware uh, applications. So why use ontologies instead of uh, plain uh, files or uh, relational databases? Well, first of all, the use of ontologies is uh, growing. Uh, the semantic web is a perfect example of this. Lots of applications and standards and uh, best practices around the web already uh, defines uh, some, uh, lots of stuff about on ontologies and uh, they try to, I don't want, don't want to say force, but encourage people to, in some specific cases, to already start using uh, ontologies. Another thing, an ontology is uh, easy to store, uh, is easy to store and share, mainly because it's uh, in most of the cases written in a plain text file, and uh, it's also easy to man maintain. Why is an ontology easy to maintain? Uh, because there's a clear uh, border between the data and the application. Your entire data is stored in the ontology uh, side, which means that uh, you probably have someone, let's call that someone a uh, data expert, that will be handling uh, your ontology. Uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, maps and cities and countries and have an, an ontology to store that information, the person that will be handling the information in the ontology is uh, probably an expert on the information. So he can set lots of things that will be useful uh, when the, uh, uh, will be useful for validating the, the information in the ontology. Uh, for example, if uh, a city is a city, it can't be a country. So that kind of uh, invariance and extra information can be on the ontology itself. So the person who develops the application that uses the ontology can rely of that, uh, on that information. This is why there's a clear border between the ontology and the application. So to use ontologies, we need to define an ontology. What is an ontology? Uh, we can say that an ontology it's a sphere of thought. This is very useful for philosophers, for example, but uh, for us in computer science, this is not enough. So we can try to define an ontology as an artifact that specifies uh, a reality or a, a specific uh, domain and does that by specifying concepts that exist in that domain and the relations between those concepts. If we want to take this further, we can start formalizing uh, ontologies. And here's an example where we, we can say that an ontology needs to have concepts and needs to have uh, a set of relations between concepts and instances of concepts and uh, so on. But in our specific case, we want to keep a certain degree of freedom so we don't use the formal definition or, and uh, we also don't use the very simple definition, 
we use something in the middle. So an ontology is a set of information that is defined by concepts. Those concepts represent things in the real world. And they're also, uh, the, the ontology also represents the relations uh, between those concepts. Uh, for example, in this case, we have a small representation of a very small ontology where we have concepts represented in squares, like Lisbon, for example. Oops, sorry. And we have another concept that it's a city. And we have a relation called is a between the concept Lisbon and the concept city. Uh, are we, this uh, is very intuitively to read. W what we are saying with this relation is that Lisbon is a city. And so uh, and using this uh, approach, we represent all the information in the ontology that we require for our application. So now that we have a definition of an ontology that we are going to use, we have to choose a way to actually represent this information so that we can use it. There are lots of uh, formalisms and ways to represent an ontology, a concrete representation of an ontology. Uh, these are some examples. The OWL is the one that uh, W3C normally uh, advocates to use uh, and as ontologies. Topic maps and scores are also families of language that can be used to represent ontologies, but uh, they are maybe not so common. Yet again, in this case, we won't be using any one of those because they are way too complicated. We want to keep uh, things simple. So we are go going to use this ISO standard 2778, which was initially devised uh, to formalize uh, Thesaurus, which is uh, an object in the family of uh, the ontologies, which uh, it has uh, concepts and has relations between uh, concepts. And uh, here's an example of a file using this standard. Again, we're seeing that uh, the concept Lisbon, the concept Lisbon is related with the concept Portugal using a relation named uh, city of. We also sh uh, chose this um, formalism because we already have a nice module and mature module uh, to work with it uh, inside Perl. So now we have the definition for our ontology. We have a formalism that we can use to represent the ontology uh, to use in our application. The next thing we need is some way to query the ontology to gather information or uh, run any arbitrary operation on that ontology. For this, we chose to devise a new domain-specific language. Uh, this, uh, this means that we are, are trying to create a very small and simple uh, domain-specific language to address only that particular problem from my application or from uh, uh, my Perl script, I want to query the ontology for information and execute some action if required. So we want this language to be simple, but yet expressive enough so we can find, uh, so we can write uh, real world uh, applications. We are going to use a rule-based uh, domain specific language that it's based on this uh, simple pattern. On the left side of the arrow, we have a pattern, and on the left, on the right hand side of the arrow, we have an action. So, uh, my, uh, a program written using this language will be a set of rules like that. So, a program is a set of rules, and what is a pattern? A pattern is the information that you are looking for in the ontology. You might be looking for concepts or relations, and the action is the action that you want to execute when that pattern is found. 
So if you're trying to find cities in the ontology, you, can, you may want to print that, okay, I found a city and the city name is X. So my program written in this domain specific language will be a set of these rules. Here are some uh, patterns, examples uh, that we can write. We can search for single terms or relations. A term is a concept. We can look for uh, concepts and the, the, uh, we can look for facts. This means uh, we have two concepts and the relation that binds them. And we can combine these using AND, OR, OR operators. There's another uh, important detail. I can specify variables instead of the actual concept or relation that I'm looking for. This allows me to write, for example, things like this. This will return all the concepts in the ontology that are related with the concept city using a relation called ISA. In practice, this will return the names of all, all the cities in my ontology. And then I can combine all these uh, smaller examples using the AND or OR operations to specify uh, complex patterns. On the right hand side of my rules, I can uh, write actions, uh, operations I want to execute when that specific pattern is found. There are some operations that are predefined, for example, for adding or removing information for the ontology, but you can also specify an anonymous subroutine that will be executed uh, when the pattern is found. Inside this routine, you, you write uh, Perl code, which means that, in theory, you can, write, you can do whatever you want when the pattern is found. So these are examples of rules which means that I have the pattern that I'm looking for, uh, for on the left side of the fat arrow and the execution and the action I want to execute when the pattern is found. These uh, variables on the right side will be automatically instantiated with the instance that were found on the left side, which means that this will execute once for every city that was found in the ontology. We can do very complex things in a, a very simple way. Uh, for example, this uh, rule is actually adding to the ontology the transitive closure of these two facts. This means, for example, if some concept is subclass of uh, B and that B is subclass of C, then we want to explicitly add that A is a subclass of C, or we can remove it, depends on the requirements of our application. So, this was our program. We, we then had to implement a compiler that could handle all these rules, and given a program and an ontology, would uh, go through those rules, find, try to match the patterns in the ontology, and execute the action uh, blocks for every rule font. This compiler is a simple tool that takes a program written in OML and produces a result. This result can be of any kind because in the action side of the rules, you can produce HTML files, produ produce every, uh, anything you want. This is just some more details of the compiler, not that important, but the next step that, uh, was that we now have a language that we can use to query and update information on an ontology, but we have another problem. Most uh, real-world applications require more than that. Uh, so uh, can we write those real-world uh, applications using this domain-specific language? The answer is yes, because, because on the right hand side you can specify anything you want, so you can execute what you want, but that's not what we want to do. Because uh, the domain specific language was created specifically 
for addressing that problem of updating and query the ontology and not everything else. So the real, or what we really wanted is to use a combination of the two languages. So for the most common operations, we would use Perl and for the ontology aware applications and operations, we would use our domain uh, specific language. And uh, this was our approach. We started by uh, weaving small snippets of our written in our domain specific language inside our scripts. Uh, in this example, we are just printing the terms that we found in the ontology. And we, for that, we are, you, we are using uh, OML, but for everything else, we are using uh, Perl. And with this, we were able to start creating applications that use both languages at the same time. This was the approach that we use to combine uh, both languages. We start by a script or a program that is written in Perl and in the domain-specific language. We split the program. We run the compile operation on the domain-specific language to produce Perl. The Perl can uh, stay Perl because we are running the program in our Perl interpreter. And the final result is achieved when the Perl interpreter executes uh, the code. Note that this is all done behind the curtain. So when you are using the language, the domain specific language, you don't need to do this anything by hand. This will be done by the Perl interpreter. And you don't have to have anything special uh, installed uh, besides the modules. This is the algorithm that is used. And this is a small application example where we wanted to try this uh, language and this embedding uh, system. So this is application. It's very typical application that has a map from uh, Google Maps and used as information about the map. The thing is that all the information that we are seeing in this uh, web interface is stored in an ontology. So this is the kind of uh, request that the interface does to the server, and this is the, this is the kind of the replies that uh, the interface needs to build, to use the application. So to build this, we use a small C CGI uh, program that uses Perl for handling the requests from the web server and to f um, get the param params that were in the request and then use a small snippet written in our domain-specific language that actually queries the ontology for information. And we use Perl again to print out this information in JSON. This is the almost the same, but to add new information. And uh, uh, this is the way we used to build applications that use Perl as a general purpose programming language and use the domain specific language to handle the operations that require the ontology. There are also other modules in CPAN that can be used to write this type of applications. Uh, there's also this very interesting tool that is Zai, which is an um, extension for the C Sharp uh, compiler that allows you to write this kind of things, but in C sharp. And just to conclude, uh, the problem was to have a Perl application using ontologies to store and uh, update uh, information. We wanted to have a domain specific language to write these operations in a very simple and elegant way, but we also wanted to execute our programs inside a Perl application because Perl handles a lot of stuff that our domain-specific language can't. And this way, we were able to keep the program's uh, language efficiency throughout the code. This, uh, this efficiency is not about time or memory consumption. It's uh, language-wise efficiency. We want to be able to write small, simple, and elegant program, programs. 
and that's it. Thank you. I'm not sure if we have time for questions. Okay, one or two questions, but I'll be around. So if you have any comments or questions, you can talk to me later. Yes? You were using the relation city of. Are they uh, reflected? Does it mean city in the other? other well, uh, well uh, we not, not in that spe uh, specific case, but uh, it's um, normal to have reflexive uh, relations. So, not in this specific case, but it's possible to have. Okay. Yes? Oh, sorry. Several times mentioned we. Uh, please define who is we and provide some background what you actually do in real. We, sorry, that was my mistake in the beginning. We, me, Alberto, and uh, Jose Almeida, uh, we all uh, worked on this in the context of uh, several university projects. So uh, I'm taking my PhD on language, programming language uh, area. Uh, Alberto did his PhD on uh, natural language processing, and uh, Professor Jose Almeida is somewhere in the middle between programming language and natural uh, language. Uh, so since this is uh, basically a language problem, we combined efforts to try to come up with this uh, solution. Uh, all these modules that I've talked about are on CPAN, if you want to look at, at them and try them, but they are nearly not even close to complete. They are in heavy, heavy development. Okay, thank you.